All right, let's see how long this lasts before the uh, games ensue. So uh, I guess this week, you know, in honor of the T-shirt, no, nah, it just came out like that. Uh, I didn't plan it like that. I threw on the T-shirt because I was running around doing different things, uh, getting my business entrepreneurial goals on. I'm, I'm just starting different portfolios at this point in time. Like I'm still, you know, my main focus is my career as a psychotherapist. But in uh, light of that, I have other career goals. And I guess that's what I'm gonna speak on today. The hustle vibe, you know, everybody got their own hustle. Like right now, some people can laugh, some people can joke, like, but you know, whether you rich or broke, the whole idea and the whole plan is to make whatever happen happen so you can fulfill your goals. And I don't care if your goal is to be on permanent vacate. I don't care if your goal is to uh, start your own business. I don't care if your goal is to have a big family. Like you work towards your goals. You get your you establish yourself, you make a path plan. Some people don't live like that. Some people, like some people get mad at me, like you plan out too much and you take things too seriously and you should really uh, take time to just live in the moment. Like, I, I guess that feeds my anxiety. I don't really get to live in the moment. Like, I don't, not that I want to, like for me living in the moment is like just having fun spontaneously like I like a lot of times you see me play you see me play on social media more than you see me be serious and like living in the moment for me might be like seeing somebody and just having a spontaneous conversation which is usually going to be playful because I'm an ass like that but um like I say when it comes to my business mind like I keep telling people my business mind is like completely different my analytical mind is completely different than my playful mind. Like, you know, this is social media. So uh, I'm not trying to offend anybody, but I, I don't think I really take shots at too many people, maybe my stalker, but uh, that's about it. I, I don't, I'm not a racist dude. So I, I don't feel like I'm trying to be uh, offensive and I'm definitely not trying to be offensive on a regular basis. <coughs> I'm just playful and my freestyles, like I ain't on Wild and Out, but my comedic freestyle, and I know, like I'll be saying, I do have comedy, I do have material. Like I, I, I don't know why I don't put out more Lord Forgive Ems, like even right now, when it came to coming up here to do the regular, the Bear Facts podcast, it's like, one, I forgot it was Thursday too. Like, yeah, I mean, sometimes I'll be laying in the bed and I don't feel like it. And when it comes to the, maybe I should take a day, maybe this weekend. Like, I think I had the weekend kind of planned out, not to fill the whole weekend, but maybe I can, because some of the jokes is like, I got the basic skeleton for the joke, but I don't, I didn't write the, the whole joke out. Like when I said it in my head and like, I can, like I, when I'm saying on well, one thing, when I'm like roasting, whatever that is, that I see, I've talked about, I've talked to somebody else about, um, walk past, road past, whatever. When I go in, it's like, I can go for like 15 minutes to 45 minutes to 90 minutes just on that one subject. And I know it would be funny, but I never really take the time. Like some stuff, like when it comes to, uh, I call them the cookie pushers and my joke, the Girl Scouts, like, Anytime I do something, like if I go to the supermarket, if I see them out there, because that's like I said, that's real life. I really uh, was at the Walmart and they were out there selling their cookies. And um, they said, will you buy some cookies? And I was like, I ain't got no cash on me. And they were like, well, we got PayPal, we got Cash App, we got Apple Pay, we got Google Pay. And I thought that was funny as hell. And then the whole joke evolved and I've been on social media at least three four times with different forms of the uh, cookie pusher joke uh, not like that initial time I said the cookie pusher joke on here 
like actually tried to make a skit or a comedy segment out of the cookie pusher joke. It was that just the cookie pusher joke, but it's been times where I was just bored waiting for something and I went in on the cookie pushers and then other times where, and every time the joke's different. And then like the, uh, the inappropriate of the, the BED, uh, um, it's too raunchy, it's too raunchy. Uh, I don't want, I call it the pussy queen joke. Um, I've done that in that rehearsal. I don't think I've done that like on here on social media because that was old. That was like, I, I guess I put that, I don't even know where I put that. Maybe I put that on uh, Facebook a long time ago, but not uh, but not Instagram. Like I just started Instagram in, like a close to a year ago, it ain't a year yet. I've been basically out of work for a year, but I ain't been um, on Instagram now the whole time. So I think the first John I did on here was the, uh, it was an Uber joke. It, that was when I was Uber and that was after I graduated, it was an Uber joke. And like, I was just riding around. And like I said, but in different weird playful moments, like I've got time and temperatures that I haven't released now to, keep up on the time and temperatures. When you go back into the archive where the time and temperature is, you'll get that. But uh, I got time and temperatures that I haven't released. So even before that first uh, Uber joke, when I said I was going to skate off with a baby or I skated off with a baby, that's just a joke. I've never really did that. That kind of is reality because like, you know, um, I was doing the Uber and a couple of times, like I was running my mouth with the client and they got out the car was like, oh, okay, bye, bye, bye. So I'm like, all right, see you later. And I drove down the street and I might've pulled around the corner and, and I looked back and there might be groceries in the drone and more groceries in the um, trunk, but that only happened like two, three times. It's, I guess too many times, but you know, when you're running your mouth, like some people don't say nothing when you do. And you get out, they like, yeah, I mean, depending on who you are, you might help them out and who they are. You might get out your car and help them out type of weather, I don't know. Maybe you won't, maybe you sit in your ass, I don't know, I don't know. But like, you know, so it didn't happen that day, but it happened a couple times and I was already doing time and temperatures and I was at this point where I wanted to do a time and temperature. For when you, got, you don't need an alibi, but you, but you got an alibi, but you shouldn't need an alibi, but you got an alibi. You know, because you don't want to be in nobody else's mess. You don't have any mess of your own. If you're going to get in the mess, it would be your own mess. But you stay out of mess, so you shouldn't need an alibi. Like dodge mess, but you got one. So anyway, um, so I don't know. I was riding around, and I was doing the Uber thing, and I was like, all right, well, I'm not just going to do a time and temperature. I'm going to do one of these. And like, I didn't even have that uh, skate off with a baby joke even written, but um, I think it was good material. Like I, I just thought of it then. I went down, I just dropped somebody off probably in like uh, North Philly area, somewhere around like um, Allegheny, Diamond Street, it was somewhere around there. Between Allegheny, Allegheny uh, West and uh, what is that? Strawberry Mansion, somewhere around there. It might have been Strawberry Mansion. So I just rode down the um, Kelly Drive and I was sitting out there because it's like, you know, even when I was working in substance abuse the year before, it was like on the way home, I might hit the boulevard, then come down to Kelly Drive and just cruise, avoid the 76 traffic, cruise down Kelly Drive, look at the nice water because I'm, a, yeah, I mean, going down to Wilmington before working up in the Northeast, I was on 476, 495, one of them, and there was water. And sometimes you see the uh, sunrise, sometimes you see the sunset, depending, no, you wouldn't, it'd be on the other side. But anyway, sun was going down, it would get dark over the water, but anyway, it's not. Uh, so I did that, that was the first time I got into that. Um, and like I'm saying, I got mad drawn that I, like, the whole plan, like the whole plan was the, this was like a decade ago. And it's not, like I say, it's not like I'd be procrastinating just like with the video games. 
like I, the plan was to handle what I got to do first, like handle my business first. Like it was always about getting those degrees and stuff. Like y'all can't see the degree, but y'all, uh, but on that on camera too, they got it panned over. Anyway, uh, so um, the focus was always doing what I had to do. Then not everything else was second there. So like, yeah, I mean, at, and the whole thing was never really taken. I never, like at the age I was started writing comedy, I was like 29, 28, something like that. I think I was 29, going on 30. And it's like, yeah, I'll go do an open mic night. I'll go do like a club for free just to like play around or some shit, just to um, have fun. And like I've been on vacation or I've just been down the Jersey Shore a couple of times and I've seen signs for open mic nights. I've seen um, comedy clubs where they uh, do stuff like that. I've never done it though. Like I like back then I was just starting to write comedy and I wasn't even, I ain't had that much material. I wouldn't say I wasn't confident, but I ain't had that much material. Uh, then I know I went to an open mic night just to check it out. This was the John on South Street, but they closed it since then. They closed it not too long after I went there. But I went there, it was a couple, it was probably more comedians than people in the crowd. And I'm not saying that to discourage anybody or if that makes you comfortable because you get to perform and not, uh, but I don't know, because they got the helium downtown and then they got, um, I don't own them, I don't, I'm not like, I mean, they got helium and then they got the other John, uh, Punchline, Punchline Philadelphia. I guess they are a chain in different states. And, you know, hopefully one day I'll be able to bring my, the Circus Bear uh, comedy showcase somewhere. Yeah, I mean, some, somewhere, I don't know. We'll, we'll see, we'll see. I'm trying to get there, so we won't do it. Uh, that, I don't know how close that is on the totem pole. Like, I mean, those is downtown and then Fishtown and Port Ritchie, whatever you want to say. So, you know, if I do something on this end or up somewhere else, I, competition ain't too, too close. Even though I've seen people have their little club flyers and they putting on a comedy show out here, but you know, over time, hopefully everything will work out and we'll get to all our goals over time. Like I said, the education was the main thing for me because it's like, Counseling is what I wanted to do. Therapy is what I wanted to do. It's not like I, I know that my degree don't make me God or Superman or anything like that, Batman, nothing like that. It was just do what I found out that I was good at at life. I had to go through that. Now, like I gotta say, if I would have thought of like tattooing at 18, 19, 20, I would have loved to have gotten in that field, but nobody has a DeLorean. And I got my first tattoo at 29, not in the midlife crisis thing. It was just when I got it, I don't know. Like, I never really cared about tattoos, but when I got them, I can draw. I can draw and I'm an artist, stuff like that. But when I got my first tattoo, it was like, I don't know. Like, I never thought it would hurt because I'm not like a, but it didn't feel like anything. Like I said, I got 13 tattoos and I didn't feel any real significant pain any of them like and then I tell people to join on my shoulder blade my join on my back shoulder blade I didn't even know the ball was going nothing I ain't feel nothing like I don't know if it's because I'm big because like yeah I mean I'm big but I didn't even feel the ball going nothing and then he did it so quick he did it in like 15 minutes I was like I'm done I'm like what it might even have been shorter than 50 or for, it seemed like it was like 15 minutes might have been 45 minutes but whatever I didn't even feel touch it so it was like yeah I mean like it was just a weird experience altogether, but it's there. I don't know. But um, I, I'm saying, like, when I was a young boy, I, like, that's why I'm saying the whole thing about that. And that's why I try to talk to my clients about, especially in substance abuse, like, thinking outside the box. Like, I'm not trying to say any, I'm not trying to tell anybody to be me, but, like, if I came from the same familiar places you've been, not saying that our stories are the same or that our stories are identical. We just familiar with the same familiar stories that'll be there 20 years after we did just somebody in somebody else's life living the familiar story. Like, you know, like Jay-Z said, soon you'll experience deja vu too. Um, 
that's all I'm saying. Like, I, I know I've never been on the level criminally where I'm moving packs across state or uh, moving bricks or kilos or nothing like that. But and I ain't going to get into too much of that, except for when we really jump into the meat of the, the business talk. Um, like, when I talk to my clients, like I'm saying, I, I didn't never care about tattoos until I got my first one at 29. Now, like, when it comes to drawing, like I've said before, like, I would draw a lot as a kid, but then I would go years without drawing nothing. And then I draw a lot as a young adult, and then I go years without drawing nothing. And then I go years as a middle aged adult, and then not draw nothing. And like I said, when I started getting tattoos, it was like, I got the first one, then I got the second one, then I got third one. Then it's like, I got four at one time, then I got six at another time. And it wasn't just that, like, it wasn't like I loved the pain, because like I said, I didn't feel the pain. It was just like, you know, a form of expression. Like, like I say, that's how I got into, even before I knew it was called the tattoo tour, the tattoo tour, because I know all 13, well, 12 out of 13 of my tattoos have a story connected to them. They have a, a symbol, it symbolizes something. It's a meaning to it. So like, you know, when I talk to other people about tattoos or when I talk to other people about why they got certain things, like one, I'm genuinely uh, interested because like a lot of times I'd be interested in stuff that people don't care about. Like, I don't know. Like, so I've had people say like, nobody's ever asked me that. People have said like, nobody's ever showed interest in these things before. But I guess that's what makes me good at being a therapist, besides the analytical part. But so you know, um, that's how it be. And now it's like I'm not only in love with tattoos; it's like as a business, like that's what I want to really do. Like, because like I said, I like my drawings and I love my drawings. But like, I could go up until this point when it comes to the tattoo stuff, and like I, this is what I'm saying. Like at 29, and then I put the case at 30, whatever, 31, went away at 32, came home at 34, went to finish school and stuff like that. And like, if I would have thought like, like somebody suggested the therapy thing to me, like, and like I said, I ain't got no glory in to go back in time, but and you gotta learn to live with regrets. But if like, you know what I mean, I was 20 and somebody said, yo, you should be a tattoo artist. Like, I don't know how realistic I would have took them, at 20, because I was still running the streets doing dumb shit, not caring about nothing, and like just enjoying being a dumbass. But like, you know what I mean, if I would have took it seriously like I do now, like I still want to do it now. But it's like I, I just like that's why I talk to when I talk to some of my clients. It's like you gotta identify what you're good at. You gotta identify. I've told my clients like, yo, find out what you're good at and exploit the shit out of that shit. Like, because I know, I know the fast life be the shit. The fast life seems like it's the shit. The party always going. The party never stops. But I know people that live that life and then go home angry, or go home mad, or go home kind of depressed, but not going to admit they depressed. You know what I mean? The party when the party's over at night, even though the party's going to start the next day, they empty, they lonely, they you not know I mean? they're not feeling that shit. Like the party's fun, and that's even before you get to that rock bottom feeling. That's the I need the party to feel good, but that's not you just putting the band aid on like what you need to address or whatever. And you can say whatever you want to me about that. Like as a therapist, I know these things there evidence based, but we're not going to that. It's not a judgment. Like I said, it's a familiar story. And not to say like, yeah, you know I mean, it's like whatever, but I just know like, like Nas said, and I, you're going to hear quotes a lot. Uh, it's the life we chose where friends become foes and the dog gets you cooked, killed quicker than you know. It's the life we chose, bring fake snakes and holes. And the only way out is death alone broke. It's the life you chose in too many happy endings. That's why you don't see too many happy endings. And I'll admit it, life is fucked up for sure. It was the only life I knew. Now, 
soap bathtubs or whatever you say, making love to my queen. I ain't got no queen. We, we, we're working on that. Don't, don't think there's no funny stuff. On that. That's just, anyway, like that's real. Like that's real. Like, like ain't too many making millions of dollars. Like I said, ain't too many pushing keys. And if they are, they probably not really, you know what I mean? I ain't gonna say down for they folk. Like, I don't know. It don't be like the movies. It don't be like the movies. It be a million dealers and some people living good for their situation, living great. Like, you know what I mean? I, you heard me say I was making more then than I was with the degrees and shit. And it's like, you know what I mean? And like I'm saying, they like, at the time, I, they were like my street fam. Like, they were street fam. So it's like, I never feel like, and coming from the same situation as other people, including clients, it's like, I'm not going to look down on the situation, but at the same time, knowing that I've accomplished a lot without that type of life, I'm always going to encourage people to not either join or get out that life. Cause like, not, and it's not just me, like I, I counsel other people that have been in a uh, deep recovery and they, I, like I said, I joke, but it's serious. Like some of them seem like they got it together more than me. Like. And I know people that'll gas you and talk shit, but like nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. And it's not a always the grass is greener situation. Like nobody's perfect. Everybody got they woes. Everybody got stuff that stress them out. But you know, it, like you know what hell is when you come from hell. <laughs> when you visited hell, you know what hell is. Like, so no matter what the stress you come from whether it's dodging bullets or waking up next to a OD body, like whether it's sweating your ass off with a gun in your chest or, you know, um, somebody flashing a gun or you like, you know what I mean, in the alley compromising your beliefs, like, you know what I mean? Everybody know when you took that trip to hell, like, and you know when you made it to purgatory, you know when God said, all right, little nigga, it's time to come on in. Come on, home, little nigga. And you still on earth, like, come on. Come on, man. So, and like when you like, I, they have stages of change, and we're not gonna get too far into that. But you know, you know when enough is enough. Uh, you know when you just bullshit and saying enough is enough, but you just doing what you gotta do. And I understand that. I think everybody understand that. Like I've told people, you can't like you're not really fooling nobody. You only fooling yourself, and I don't even think you're good at that. But. Um, you know, people have patience and people will be there as a support and a support network until you are really fed up and sick of the dumb shit and stuff like that. But like I said, it's not a judgment. It's just, a, like I said, like for me to be able to accomplish the things that I've accomplished and I'm not saying, oh, I'm great. Uh, it's not a, I'm great thing. It's a, I'm grateful. It's a, I never, ever thought of having a life outside of crime. Like there was times where like, I mean, I ain't gonna get in the, all that. And like I said, for me to have not just got out of crime, like I got out of crime, I'm not working at Mickey D's and not to down anybody working at Mickey D's, don't get gaslit. Um, but you know what I mean? Like I'm not a shoe shine person. Like, like I was called an idiot in school. I was, I was questioned about my intelligence by other students when I was getting all A's and B's and I didn't even know I was getting all A's and B's. I was only concerned with the wind bell rung and rolling up and that blunt. And that's no bullshit. Like I've seen people chest to chest with a teacher while another dude in my class is chest to his back. So they basically got this nigga sandwich asking like, wow, why I get an F and Tyreek got an A and I'm like, I'm sitting at my desk with my eyes barely open, like, huh? I got an A. Okay, well, I'm about to go smoke some. And that was junior high. Like, that was my junior high. And, like, I've had people walk into classes. Somebody reminded me of this recently. Like, I, I was sitting, my teacher had a couch in his classroom. I don't know why. But for that year, I claimed the couch and sprawled out. Like, you know, some people be scared, they see the couch. You're like, is that a trap? Are you trying to see if we're going to be good students or not? Then they go sit in the desk. Me, I was like, fuck that. I'm going to the couch. I'm just me like that. 
Now that was high school. Now uh, the first day of that class, it was the first uh, class of the morning, and somebody came in the class was like, "Oh, this is a certain type of class, like an accelerated college prep class." Oh, I feel good. I feel smart. And then they look, and I'm sitting there sprawled out on the couch, like, "Yeah, you know I mean." And they're like, "Oh, Tariq's in this class. Oh, this must be for dummies." And that was the year after. No, that wasn't even the year after I got honor roll. The honor roll was on up there. It's over there. I don't know if you can see it. It's the top. It's the top over there. Because <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how it's going to come out on the um, John when you play it back. But that's the honor roll, John. But that wasn't even the year that I got honor roll. But I got good grades. I just never really like. I never applied myself in school. And I got kicked out of a lot of school and I got held back twice because like, I, I, I don't know. Like I never really applied myself until like junior or senior year. And that was only to do enough to get by because I was cutting school so much. So I, you know, I just needed to pull my grades up so I could graduate or whatever, or go to the next grade. And even junior year, I had to go to, uh, I had to go to um, summer school. Uh, and I ain't gonna get into that story, but anyway. So like I'm saying, it was a it was a class for smart kids. Like I was already in that type of class. That was no, that was the year. That was tenth grade year. And ninth grade I got the honor roll. And um first day, tenth grade, she came in and like I didn't even want to be in that class. Like I I was in those classrooms for all my classes. I didn't even want to be in those classes. Like uh I had got kicked out of one school or asked not to come back to one school and I went to another one. And then they had me take a, a placement test. And in that placement test, I wasn't like, I wasn't at the top of the, they had different tracks in the school. They had first, second, third, and fourth. I don't think they had a fifth, but they had them. And when I tested, I tested in second track for all those, uh, all of my classes except for English. English, I was in third track, which I, I was told third track was the, general classes that was the so like I know in my public school they called it like academically talented AT or academically placed AP I don't remember and then they had the accelerated classes I don't know which was which I just remember like yeah I mean but and then when I got uh, um so I placed into that and basically that's how they broke it down the track three was general the Track two, but I don't know. I had somebody that went there for four years. And I only went there for two months, a month and a half before I got kicked out of that school. And then um, when I got kicked out of that school, I went back to the public school I was told not to come back to. Uh, but I went back there. It's a neighborhood school. You can't really, I don't know, districts. I don't know. Um, so I went back there. And uh, when I went back there, they had placed me in, I guess, general classes. They were placing me, they placed me back in general classes or whatever you want to say, I don't, I don't remember. But at the end of that year, like I'm saying that that year, I don't know why, because I didn't even know I was getting honor roll. Like, you know, it was a shock to me. I, um, I know it's not the only year I got it. It was sporadic. Like I remember early on, but it was like, you know, I just told you I was a center to get through the day and go smoke some reefer. Um, so that was back then. And then it was like, yeah, you know I mean, um, by the time we got to the end of that year, when you got to meet with the guy and his counselor, because I guess I filled out the classes I wanted. And I guess they were like, oh, no, nigga. I don't know, bring that little nigga down to the office. And I got in the office. They brought me down twice. But the first time they brought me down, they were like, oh, OK, um, see, here's this is what we're going to be doing. We're, we got a uh, new program, it's called uh, College Prep. And what that does is it, when you're in College Prep, uh, it not only gives you an academic edge, but it also, um, what should say? Oh, it also gives you credits towards your college. And I don't know how that broke that down, but it was College Prep and that's how I wish it said. And she said something about uh, when you go to, if you go to choose to go to community college, uh, you can transfer all your credits to Temple and local uh, university for those not in the know, but you know, 
Temple been in the big dance. Like, you know, they've been in the, um, you know, you got the Elite Eight, um, the Sweet 16. They'd be in the 32 range. They'd be in the 32. they definitely in that 100, like 68, whatever, when it first starts off. But uh, I digress. Um, so, you know, they said that I can eventually, they would take all my um, credits at Temple from the community college. Now, nowadays, I think there's a couple universities, if not more back then, but I definitely know now that will take all the credits. But that's a tricky situation when transferring and doing different things. Cause I know uh, I had family members that uh, got caught up transferring, but they were, what was really weird was they were transferring from different locations of the same school. So that was a little weird to me, but you know, it is what it is. I'm not making fun of my family. The school is a little weird. I don't know. Anyway, it was a long time ago. So anyway, um, so I'm in there talking to the guidance counselor and she was like, it'll prepare you for um, going to college. And I'm looking at her like, my daughter, Saka, I ain't going to college. She, like, I don't know, it was a weird experience. And like, you know, I make fun of it now. Some people might be mad, I don't care. But, uh, you know, um, like it was an intense conversation. I was sitting there like, I ain't give a fuck about nothing because like that was my attitude right now. And she was like, no, it'll put you in a good place. And basically I'm sitting there trying to convince her to leave me in general classes. And she was telling me like, no, we need, we want you. We think it'll be good for you. You should be doing this. I'm like, no, mm -mm. I ain't doing it. Keep me in general classes. What, what's fucked up is, excuse my language, is I remember what I was thinking. I was thinking like, if I'm ace in general classes, what the fuck I want to get, make things harder for? Um, keep me in general classes. But no, they moved me up and I can't say my grades were the best, but I definitely didn't apply myself at all. And that's how I got into that segment of it. Cause like, even if you came with me or at me with the tattoo stuff, like even when I did eventually go to community college and that's a whole different conversation. And I don't know if I'll ever get into that conversation just to make a long conversation short cause I was supposed to be talking about business and this isn't that. It was just like, you know, um, I visited my brother in State College and that was one of the greatest times of my life. The, I stayed up there for two weeks and it was definitely one of the greatest times of my life. And like, I, I don't wanna call myself a street dude, but at that time it was like, I was, strip, I was a street dude. Like I was fully fledged, emerged in, street life and I was like, yeah, I mean, ain't nothing, ain't no party better than the street life party because the street life party don't stop. I was wrong. I was wrong. Um, I ain't gonna go into all of it, like, you know, but, and that's a bad influence to go back to school. Like for some people, like, like at this age and having daughters, I was just talking to somebody yesterday about it, like, you know, and like, I don't know if I had that conversation with my daughter, but I definitely wanted to have a conversation with my daughter talking about like, you know, take that, it, like, I know, like, you know, I don't want anybody to get excluded from social scenes. I'm looking at the snake. Um, I don't want anybody to be excluded from social scenes or social life, but I definitely feel like taking that freshman year to focus on and acclimate to school would be a good idea. Like I, I'm, I'm me, so like I'm used to like exclusion don't really mean nothing to me. Like I'm me, so like, you know, you see me by myself, but you see me having, like I know everybody can't do that. I know everybody can't, wouldn't feel comfortable by themselves all the time, except for like when they have work. Some people will get depressed. Some people will question like, why don't people like, no. I mean, but like, you know, so like, I don't know if I would have that conversation with my daughter, but like, I definitely think that people should definitely take that whole first year of freshman year. Cause they say, it's like going from college ball to the pros, like the high school to college. Like, you know, it's a, it, for some people it's more freedom. You've never been around away from family. You never had that uh, umbilical cord cut. You never had nobody looking over your shoulder if you're on the dormitory or whatever. 
You've never been in certain environments that are two blocks away from campus. Stay on campus. Stay on campus. Anyway, um, it, it's a different thing. So it's like take that time to get like the parties. That uh, we're not going. Uh, we're not going. That was the best time of my life, and I, I, I'm 40. You don't want to be 40. I've been telling you. Tell me, you don't want to be, if you can help me, like, get that, get your bachelor's at 22, your, uh, whatever that shit is called, your master's at 24, 26, do that, and then, I'm not saying, like, I'm saying, have your fun, do your whatever, like, but I don't, don't, get acclimated, that's all I'm saying, like, don't, because, like, you know, it is, each, University, each school, even the uh, community colleges have, I don't want to say dropout rates, but that's what the fuck they are. Excuse my language. They drop out rates. Like uh, some, because they have a different, they got a different thing for um, like transfers. They got a different statistic, I think, for transfers. Like they got their retention rate. They got the dropout percentage, I guess. They got the transfer rate. I, I look at those things when I make decisions. Like, I was making decisions the other day, but I just didn't want to... Uh, I didn't want to jump the gun, but I didn't want to just sit on anything neither. So, like, you know, I was trying to weigh out different options, because, like, I, I knew what the one was paying, but I didn't know what the other was paying, but, you know, benefits could have... Because I like both positions, but at the same... And they were both different like the same distance apart just about but at the same time decisions and they like i'm saying like when like it's it's a lot of universities colleges and community colleges and they all have a dropout rate they all have a completion rate they all have a retention rate like they all have a rate of uh transfers people unhappy with the school like people rather be at that school people just there to get to another school or whatever and don't get caught up in the madness because i don't know they call i know they have specific schools that are called party schools so like you know i'm just saying like, i don't know i did online school and i think that was very safe for me no bad influences in my house you know just go to work come home do your son uh JC, Jay Z said it, you know, mommy took a bus trip. Now she got her bus there. Everybody rock. I'm trying to get you to escape the wolves. Stay on campus. Don't explore in the neighborhood. Stay on campus. You might get lost or missing. You don't want that. See, now, I know the folks you don't. Stay on campus. Anyway, um, I might not know the folks out there now, but they're familiar stories. Stay on campus. Anyway, um, serious. I'm just saying, like, when it comes to my daughter, my niece, whatever, like, you know, get acclimated. Like I said, I don't want anybody to be antisocial. How you group of friends, how you study buddies, find people that are aiming for successful completion. Um, the panty raiders, they're not too good for nieces and daughters. Um, the pajama jammy jams. None of those. Lead at the house party. You watch House Party Three for that too. I don't. I might go down and watch that. Thing. Anyway, um, the pledging, the pledging. Like I said that in the different rant. Um, that's why I really wanted to do the Mason thing because, like, I didn't have that experience in college and coming out of that knucklehead dumb. It's like you know, I tried the church thing. I believe in God and like, yeah, you know I mean, I'm not really, I'm not a perfect person, but I do believe in God and. Like, you know what I mean, when I was doing, when I was heavily doing the big bear hug stuff, like I was meeting church members and stuff. Now, some church members weren't church. You turned me off. We already talked about that. I ain't going to go too deep into that. I'm just talking about different communities. Like, it's different communities. Like, I ain't no boy scout. Too old for that. So, you know what I mean? That ain't the, in the cookie bushes. I ain't one of these bounces. Like, my daughter was never a, a Girl Scout. So, you know, I ain't have to sell in corporate or be a bouncer at, on in the low rises. So, uh, mm -hmm. but you know, I, I meant to get into this business rant, like, you know, but we 
I, I've been just talking. I think it's still good, good content. I still want to get some other people, but like I got time. I got time. Like uh, I've been. I don't want to say less focused on certain things, but, you know, I think everything's still coming along. We took this year of what the year was, but, you know, hopefully uh, we're coming out of that dark cloud and they're in a new dark cloud that I'm more familiar with, I guess, but we'll see. I don't know. Um, still working on removing the dark cloud, but, but uh, with all this said, I don't remember where I zigged and zagged, but you know, business. And that's what I'm saying. Like, whether I, I went the college route and the university route and the master's degree route because my goal fit my interests. And like, even with the other goals I have post graduate school, it's like it, they still fit my interests and they still fit my desires. and get my tool man, Tim the tool man, Taylor on. Um, I don't know, I'm turned on when I go into the deeper in the lows. Uh, um, I don't know. Uh, I want to get more experience doing those type things, uh, repair type things. I'm not trying to do you no know, hand or no uh, mechanical type things like with cars and stuff like that. Not that I look down on that. That's, just nothing I have a knowledge of. Like I have a basic knowledge of cars, but not like, I've never been under a hood. I wasn't raised under the hood. I wasn't raised on carpentry, but I've had different carpentry classes and I've uh, worked with people doing different carpentry pro projects. So uh, I know the tools of the trade. I know different things and tricks of the trade. Like even like with that, uh, picture frame. The picture frame is just something I wanted to do. Like I was sitting there staring at that painting that you see in the video yesterday. And it was like, yo, I want to make a picture frame. Like I know, and it's funny to me because like you go into some of the stores like Michael's or whatever, and they have the like the 90 degree angle with the different jaws, but it's like that basic carpentry knowledge lets me know, like even when I did my daughter's, um, when I did my daughter's uh, jewelry box, like we had to use the router. We only used it on like the edges of the top of the box. But I've had, uh, when I was doing the carpentry John in uh, prison, uh, we used the router, not, probably not much. When I did it in high school and junior high school, we used the table router. So like, I already know what the table router does. I know what the hand router can do in it does the coping like for, uh, it designs like not just, uh, not just um, like picture frames, but like if you were doing the molding, like if you want to make your own molding, it's good for molding, like crown molding, molding around the floor, you can make it in one piece, you can make it in two pieces, you can make it in three pieces. Like what I, what I want to do probably at the studio when the studio is open, I want to make a piece of crown molding, but have it. And I, I, I have these ideas and then I'll go to YouTube and watch people do it because I know how to do it, but I'll go to watch and like, you know, it keeps me excited and like, yeah, you know I mean, and what I want to do is come down like an inch, six inches and then have the LED lights go around. Like right now behind this TV, you can't see it, but there's a TV up there. I got the LED lights, but like, and some people put them under the desk. Like when I, bring the, uh, I bring finish with the uh, DJ booth because I got the DJ booth right here, kind of sort of, you've already seen it, but I still want to put like an extension on the side. And then, like I said, I want to put the facade and with the facade, I'll probably have some LEDs under each level. I'll probably have some LEDs. I'll probably do something better to have the screen on, even though the screen ain't working. But I've just seen some other shit that might be just as, good I, it probably won't be because like i'm probably won't like it but it'll be like i don't know but anyway um i wanted to go in on the uh business but like i don't i already been on here for like 50 minutes and maybe there'll be a part two tomorrow and it'll be better formatted but still i, I like getting on here and just discussing different things. Like I said, it, it'd be, I think it would definitely still be more fun. Like I'm still looking for that guest host I had 
a couple people commit and then disappear. But such is life. Uh, like I said, when it comes to different things, I'm hoping that once the studio is open, things will be better. Like, you know, I still got the segment, the um, tattoo tour segment of the podcast that I want to get cracking. And that I, I feel like that'll definitely be better when the studio is open. Cause like, like the picture behind me, I don't know if you can see me over here. You can't see the whole thing in the back of my chair, but this chick right here behind me in the um, backdrop over here. Uh, on this, this screen, um, you know, you got a body full of tattoos when you're in the tattoo shop, it'll probably be easier to more, bit like running up on people on the street is like, yo, I like your tattoos, yo, I got the segment I'm trying to do, blah, blah, blah. They might look at you like, yeah, you just want to see my actions. But no, in the um, tattoo shop, you hope that the environment is enjoyable, people are more laid back and stuff like that. And like I said, it, it's something that really interests me. It's like I said, 12 out of 13 of my tattoos have a story, have a meaning. And then, like I said, I'm a therapist, so I ran a group. And this is, like I said, before I knew it was called Tattoo Tours. But, like, you know, we, that's what we did. We spent the group going over Tattoo Tours. And where some people might find it trivial or whatever, it, it elicited a, a great response from the participant. It, it, it's an opportunity to get to know things about people that you've been around every day for some three years, 10 years, whatever, you know. They might not be best friends on the street, but they might've been like, yeah, I mean. But like, I think, I felt like I got a lot of good, uh, I got a lot of good information out of that. I think people were able to express things that they've dealt with throughout their lives through that group and um, share different experiences through that group. So I thought it was very good, uh, great group. That's how I feel like, you know, I know people will probably still think it's trivial. People will probably still downplay it, talk down about it, but you know, and like I said, if mine have a story that means things to me and I have a deep meaning and deep connection, not only to the tattoo, but the meaning behind the tattoo, then it's probably just as meaningful for other people. And like, I know some people wouldn't, like if I got a rest in peace tattoo on my chest or something, or if my I got my daughter's handprint and I got a lion for her zodiac sign. And if my daughter passed away, whether it was before I got the tattoo or after I got the tattoo and people were laughing at, oh, that's so corny. Like, I'd probably get mad and want to punch you in the face. But I don't know. We're not, no rap reek anymore. So, um, mm -hmm. but, and I'm not trying to put nobody out there. That was an example, but you know, some people are haters. That's all I'm saying. I don't know. But I thought it was a powerful, even if the participants didn't, from a therapeutic, from a clinician standpoint, I thought it was a powerful group. But like I've had groups on mute involving music therapy where like you sit and you like, I can read a room. That's another reason why I'm good at what I do. Whether people acknowledge it or not, like, you know, and I can't say every music therapy group was like that, but like, cause I have some makeup groups and they were just not, they were just happy not to do the regular shit. But um, it beat them off the wall, off the cuff Jones that like, really let people loosen up. Like it don't always gotta be like a stuffy room that everybody's trapped in and sitting on top of each other trying to say, I can't wait till we get out of this trap room. Like, you know, there are heavy subjects, but, and we don't want to make the subject light, but we don't want to make the atmosphere heavy and dark and stuff like that. We want to, you know, but anyway, I don't know, I'm running on that at this point. But like I said, I wanted to talk about business. Uh, uh, I know people probably, excuse me, my rant about the crack game remind me of the rap game, but it's not like, and some people take that negatively. And my whole thing behind that and my whole reason in saying that is because like, I was working basically retail. Basically, it wasn't retail, but we won't say that. And this is after I left the streets alone. This is after I left the dumb stuff alone. And basically like my boss, he he was like 
making he wasn't making me in charge of shipping and receiving whatever uh i'm gonna call it that for the end of this the conclusion but like you know for the rio basically he was uh put me in charge to go get the package uh at times i was busting down the package like you know, you know what i mean whether you get a shipment in of boxes of sweaters and you ripping them out the package, putting them on the hangers, putting them on the rack, shipping them out to the showroom. Or like I said, you, uh, we all did the math. I've uh, already broken down the math for them certain. Like I remember going to New York, the fashion district and every, and this was like for Christmas and everywhere we went, it was like, you could get 75 hats for $2 each. I'm like, nigga, I don't want to, not definitely want 75 though. I'm not and I, at the time, I was a young boy. Like, I was real young, and I didn't know, understand, like, I just want one hat. Why are you trying to sell me 75 hats, $2 each? What is the price on one? Like, nobody, we went from store to store. And, like, my mom, she was in business at the time, so she was familiar with this area. But for me, it was like, I, I'm a kid, so I'm like, I just want one motherfucking hat. Like, and I would ask the people, well, how much is one hat? And they'd be like, nigga, you get 75 at $2 a piece. I'm like, well, I know that's a great deal because hats are usually at this time it's probably like $15. But like, uh, you're not telling me if the hat is $15. You're telling me for 75 hats, I can get them for $2 a piece. Uh, that's not answering my question. So I get a little, but you know, as a businessman, it's like $2 a hat. They go for 35 for one. So you're telling me I got a 75, you, you give me 75 hats at $2 a piece. Let, let, let me do that math, that's, that's like, uh, $2, so that's, uh, that, what, a buck 50? You're telling me that's a buck 50 a hat? All right, a buck 50 total for 75, and then a buck 50, all right, now I got 75 hats, I sell them for 35. I mean, I, I'm gonna need a calculator for that. I don't, but I don't feel like going to math right now. Um, Cause that'd be what, 75, 75, 35, that's 25. And then that's what, 35, 25, 35, so that's 275, 275, and then it would be, Three five fifteen. Three five fifteen. And then what twenty one so that two hundred twenty five. And then you add them two together. So you know, that's a problem. Yeah. And um I don't know. So you know, uh just gonna bust it down like that, like no, no. I gotta go check my math now. I can do long, a long multiplication and long division. It's just like the art shit has been a while. I'm a little curious to know what I said. I don't even remember what I said. It's 375, 225, so that would be uh, 375, two, so that would be 37 plus. 25? I don't remember. I can't visualize it right now. I know you move it over, so it'd be 25. It would be 25. So you bring the five down, five, and then it'd be, what I say, 37, five, that'd be 12. So that'd be 25. Then the three and two would be three, two, five. So I said 500, 500, and come on, audience, help me out. I'm, I can't visualize it. 500, what was the other one? I don't remember. I don't remember. 12. So it'd be 525, and then you bring down the other two. So that's, I believe, 2,525. Now I'm gonna go check the uh, math on that. I'm gonna write that down because I probably won't remember because my mom be all over the place. 
I'm going to check the math. Quiz show. We can come back next week. Uh, to uh, what do you call it? We don't. We, I'm not going to make you sit here and wait while I do the actual math. Bro. I don't got a calculator up here. That ain't on the um, screen. But that's that's our show for this week. My bad. It was a bunch of ill-prepared rants, but you know, hopefully, it gets something.